Muhammad said and what he is dead. So, so it's just uh, what you call it, it's the record of Muhammad. Okay. His life, his activity, his word, his action, his teaching. And we, the, the Muslim call it Hadith. So one, the Quran is supposed to be the words of God. Yes. The other are the words of Muhammad. Hadith, it's the word of the Prophet Muhammad. Yes. And are they considered to be equal or, or what? Uh, Muslim, they are required to believe in the both books. Okay. Uh, Muslim, it's not enough to just believe in the Quran and they decline or deny the, the Hadith. According to the Islamic law, if any Muslim going to deny any of the basic teaching of Islam, he will be converted, he will be out of Islam. And Hadith, it's one of the most basics you see in Islamic faith. Okay. Now, another difference between the Quran and the Bible is that the Bible was written by individuals like Moses or Paul in the New Testament where they sat down, they wrote letters or they wrote histories or whatever. But Muhammad never did really just sit down and write the Quran no. or write the Hadith, did no. he? No, he just simply, for example, with the Quran, he was usually in trances and he would uh, make statements and people would write those down. Exactly. And all that was compiled later on after his death, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly, yes. And the Hadith is just statements that were compiled by compilers. It might be uh, statements that wives remembered or friends remembered or whatever, and they just kind of put them all together. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Now, in the Quran, there are a lot of contra contradictions as well as in the Hadith, a lot of contradictions. Yes. For example, uh, you can find verses in the Quran that talk about loving Jews and Christians yes. and treating them with respect. Yes. Then they could find verses that talk about killing them. Exactly. How, how do you change his mind? A Muslim, they justify these contradiction uh, by Arabic term and uh, Muslim and Islamic principle, they call it Nasr. Nasr or Nasr. Um, this principle means um, that the um, the the future verse going to come. It's going to decline or cancel the uh, what you call it the, the the previous verse. Okay, so a later verse yes would would cancel out an earlier verse exactly. This that is, might contradict with it. They call it nasr. If you ask them, but why Allah did do that? They will say He do that for the benefit of Muslims and for the benefit of the human being. For example, being and the uh, I remember you giving an example about alcohol. Yes. Give us that example. Exactly. Like, for example, when Muhammad started to uh, preach he, about his religion, the people in Arabia at that time, they was alcoholic addicts. They was loves alcohol. They cannot live without alcohol. And he find it so, it's going to be too difficult if he's going to give them a command to stop the drinking alcohol and to obey his command. So what he did, he just gave them um, a halfway command. He said to them, uh, no problem, keep drinking alcohol, but when you're going to come to pray to the mosque, you have to stop drinking alcohol till you finish your prayer, and after you, you finish the prayer, you can go back and drink alcohol again. So after a while, he came back to them and he said, no, this is, doesn't work. No alcohol going to be allowed anymore. And another verse came and canceled the previous verse. A Muslim, they become very upset, very angry. But how come? We can't do that. And a later verse says, okay, don't worry. Be patient. Believe in Allah. Believe in, in his prophet Muhammad. Believe in his Quranic word. And if you're going to have the ability and you're going to stop drinking alcohol in your life, Allah, He is not going to forget that. He will reward you with a river of alcohol in the paradise the day when He's going to send you to the so paradise. So we go from just drinking alcohol occasionally to not drink it during prayers to not drinking it at all to you're going to have a river of alcohol in heaven. Exactly. This is the development of the contradiction, you see, of the teaching of the Quran. And you find the same in the attitude toward Jews and Christians. Absolutely. At the beginning it was one of respect and honor and then uh, when they did not accept his revelation he turned against them and began to argue you must kill them. Absolutely. Firstly it was a development also was taking place in this subject in his relationship with the Jews and Christians. Firstly he started to adore Christians and Jews saying a wonderful thing, people of God, the people who carry his word, the people who protect his word. And later, he said, yes, you are these people. 
But listen, I am the final prophet, came with a final testament. You have to believe in me, means he started to debate them and reaching out them. So they refused. They asked him sign. The Quran says so. Ask him sign. Give us a sign that we can believe. So, and he cannot give a sign. And he went back to Allah and cried before Allah, help me to perform miracle or to give sign to these people that they can follow me. And Allah became very upset with him and said to him, okay, listen, go back to these Jewish people and these Christian people. Tell them Allah gives you plenty miracles in the Old Testament and always you rebels and against him. No more miracles. There is no, it is only one way to submit to Islam, to accept Islam or to pay the tax. And if you refuse to do this, so you will be killed. So it was development also taking place in this, uh, you see, in this contradiction of the teaching of the Quran toward the Christian and the Jews. Folks, we're going to take a brief break at this point, and when we return, we're going to ask Mark to tell us how Jesus is portrayed in the Quran. Mark, let's talk a little about the Muslim view of Jesus. I, I read in the paper recently where a Muslim imam was invited to speak at a large Christian church in the Chicago area. And when he got up to speak, the very first thing he said was, I want you to know that we Muslims love Jesus as much as you Christians do. Was that an accurate statement or not? Uh, it's not. Uh, absolutely it's not. And uh, the statement of this man, it's a deceitful statement. Why? Because the image of, of Jesus Christ in the brain of Muslims, in the Quran, in the Hadith, in the teaching of Muhammad, it's totally different than the biblical Jesus. The, the, the Quranic teaching and the Islamic G, uh, teaching about Jesus, it's Jesus, just he is the son of Mary. He was born from Mary through a miracle performed by Allah. And he cannot be the son of God. He cannot be God. Uh, he wasn't crucified. He wasn't shed his blood. Um, all his, the biblical view about the identity of Jesus Christ, it's misinterpreted by the Quran and by the Islamic teaching. When this man say a statement like that, he absolutely deceived the Christian congregation and the church as the Muslim Imam after September just, 11, yeah, just trying to get them on his side. Exactly, right? yeah. deceived the world through the secular media by telling that Islam it's a base for religion. Now, Same way. Let me make sure I understand this. Uh, they they do believe in a miracle birth for for Jesus. They do. But the Mary that they identify is really confused because isn't the Mary, the mother of Jesus, identified in the Quran as Mary, the sister of Moses? Exactly. This is <laughs> one very of confusing. the historical mistakes in the Quran. Yeah, exactly. a, a lot of mistakes about Old Testament because I, I, I get the impression that in his travels, Muhammad probably talked to a lot of Jews, exactly. a lot of Christians, got these stories, but got them all historical, mixed up. Historical mistakes, linguistic yeah. uh, mistakes, yes. and as, if, as we talk about contradiction of, of the Quran, yes. we have to talk also about the mistakes, the historical, yes. the, uh, okay. Now to get back to Jesus for just a moment. Uh, so they, they, they view His birth as miraculous in some way or other, yes. although it's from the wrong person. Yes. And then uh, the, the argument is that uh, He was not God in the flesh, that He was basically just a great prophet, right? Uh, yes, he, he considered one of the Uli Al-Azm Min Al-Rusul means the greatest prophets, okay. means Muhammad, um, uh, um, Moses, Jesus, Abraham, so they consider him one of the greatest prophets. But Muhammad being the final and greatest of He prophets. is the greatest and he is the final one. Okay. Now, did you say that they deny the crucifixion? They do crucify the, yes. The, the, does the Quran deny the crucifixion? Absolutely. Chapter number 4. Okay. Explain, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ So Jesus just died? <laughs> no. They, he, he was never died. He was never crucified. When just Jews, the Jews, tried to crucify him, Allah took him to heaven. Okay. And he's still alive in heaven. Now, do they believe that there will be a second coming of Jesus? They do believe about the second coming of Jesus, yes. 
Tell us but about that. The, the Islamic view about the second coming of Jesus totally different than the biblical view. All what Islam is talking about, his second coming, he going to do some things. One of these things, he going to come and to kill all pigs around the world. Kill all pigs? All the pigs. <laughs> Yes. You, are you serious? Yes. Sayaqtul al-Khinzir. This is the hadith, the word of Muhammad. Okay. It's so. And he's going to come to break the cross, any cross, wood cross. Break all crosses. All the crosses around the world. Okay. And he's going to stop the jizya.